today. We welcome you once. We welcome you twice. We welcome you three times in the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody came from that kind of church? Y'all, y'all ain't ready for old school Sunday yet. Don't come, don't come Sunday if y'all gonna be quiet like this on old school they Sunday. They're not ready. They're they not, not ready. ready. They're not, they not. ready. Mm -mm. Just, just stay home. All right. <laughs> Listen, that's the kind of church I came from. We thank God. Come on, giving honor to God who is ahead of my life. Come on, saints. <laughs> Listen, we want to, y'all, we're live. Say good evening to uh, YouTube. We want to thank all of you. Yes, Wesley, all of you for joining us from wherever you are on YouTube. Here in Zoom, wherever you find yourself tonight, we say welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just so glad to have you here with us on tonight. Listen, we're going to take a moment and we're going to open up in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Will, if he can, uh, to pray, open us in prayer tonight. And then, y'all, we're going to get have a, a just a few minutes of testimony. If there's anyone who have a powerful testimony about something that the Lord has done in your life, we want to make room for that. Um, um, on tonight. All right. And if you're joining us on YouTube, I'm going to keep my eyes in the chat. If you have a testimony, please, by all means, drop it in the chat and we'll make sure um, that we acknowledge you. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Yes. Father, we magnify you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify your name, Lord. We thank you for this assembly this evening, God. Uh, uh, we ask this, this evening that you would count counted as righteousness, everybody who thought it not robbery, uh, to show up this evening, Father, to, to learn more about you, to learn more uh, and go deeper in your word. Lord, I ask that hearts would be open tonight, God, that minds would be open, Father, that uh, that that deliverance would take place, that 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 you would uh, uh, set captives free this evening, Father, that that you would restore and bring reconciliation, Father. Uh, uh, we know that the entrance of your word brings light, Father. So I even ask that you would bless the man of God as he comes forth, Father, uh, our, our shepherds, as they would lead us into your righteousness, Lord. So, Father, we ask these things in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Will, for that on this morning, tonight, not this morning, but tonight. <laughs> Listen, if you have a testimony, just put your hand emoji up and I'll make sure that I call on you just to make sure um, that we can see you and have order and no one have to speak over anyone. So if you have a testimony, just touch the hands up emoji and we'll be um, we'll call on your name one by one. I see Pastor DJ has joined us tonight all the way from LA. Hey, honey. <laughs> I don't know if he can unmute because I'm hey, sure he's still in the office. Me. Oh, he he can. Hey, you want to say? I am in the say? office, but I'm, I'm unmute. I have a bad signal, but hey, everybody. You know, I couldn't miss better boot camp, y'all. I cannot. I just cannot. <laughs> so anyway, uh, again, my signal is really bad up here, so I'm going to stay on mute. But greetings, everybody, and hey, sweet. Hey, sweetie. Hi, honey. My honey bun. <laughs> well, we thank God for you being able to join us while you're still in the office. We're just grateful for a pastor who is determined, right? One who is connected. He's always showing up for us. So we give God glory, honor, and praise for him. Listen, I want you to take a moment and share this, share the invite link for someone to join us on Zoom or join us on YouTube. Again, YouTube, if you're joining us and you have a testimony, drop your testimony in the chat and we'll be happy to um, acknowledge uh, that testimony on tonight. I believe we have a hands up by Brother Will. You want to share your testimony? Come on and testify. I surely do. Um, so, so you know, I was, I was just, uh, I, I was, I was minding my business today. I was uh, about to pay uh, a bill. You know, I was getting ready to pay my light bill today uh, because we need the light, right? And um, I went to, I got the little, you know, I went for a little email. They said, you know, your bill is ready. So I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for this because I checked earlier this month and I didn't see anything. So I'm like, man, all right, well, wait for them to update it or whatever. So. I, I finally get the email. I, I find it. I open it up or whatever. I, I log in. It took me a little couple of extra steps. They got all of this two-step authentication factors and, and everything now. Um, so they made me do all of that. Um, I, I finally get in there. Um, and so I'm, I'm like, man, all right, what's, what's my damage? You know, because I don't have, you know, I, I had my AC on, you know. Uh, some of y'all had to, you know, but I had my AC on. I was a little warm. 
Um, and, and so, so I, I expected to, you know, I had to have, you know, put a couple of coins aside to pay it. And, and when I went to pay it, I, I had a, a $127 credit on it. So, so it wasn't, it wasn't just that I didn't owe them anything, but that, that I don't owe them anything until May. Right. And so, so I, I, I now I had, so I had to call because I, you know, the, cause the internet, sometimes it, it internets, you know? And, and so I'm like, well, all right, let me just, let me just call and verify. Let me make sure that, that this is real. Right. And so, so I get them on the phone and, 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 and I'm like, I'm like, hello. <laughs> hey y'all, it's me. Um, it was seen that 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 uh, that my bill is incorrect, right? And, and now now I'm you know I'm still I got my hand on the word because I'm I'm just I just wanted to call Come him back, on. right? I got my hand on it. I'm holding on, right? And 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 I'm waiting for them to respond. They're like, all right, well let, let's just check. Let's take a look, Mr. Swanson. We'll take a look. They do the whole little thing. Put you on hold on the fake hold, right? And they come back. They come back and they're like they're like, no, sir, you uh, no, you you have a you have a credit. And I'm like, well, okay, well where where did it? Where did it come from? Because <laughs> I, I want to check. I just, I just want to check, right? Come on, guy. And and, and and they said, well, it. You just have a credit, sir. My God, <laughs> my God. Okay, listen. I, 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 so, I, I, I was, I was absolutely honored because because we 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 um we know that that uh, in Malachi. Um, the, the, the word says, bring your tithes into the storehouse, right? And 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 we and, and that that scripture is all about being a faithful tither, right? Like like actually being a faithful tither. And 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 I can I, this is one of those instances where I can directly draw a line back to 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 the fact that I've been a, a faithful tither. Um, mm. To 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 why to why this type of blessing has Come happened. Come on, N nothing but God. And so I, I, I wanted to share that the, 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 the takeaway is not just about the credit, but it's about being faithful to God because he he perfects the things that that, that concern you. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to share that with y'all tonight. I've been I've been waiting for hours to share this, but that, that was it. Did, did y'all hear the man of God? <clears throat> did y'all hear the man of God? Listen. He said, I see that this bill was, you know, I don't owe anything to me, but he said, I need to call and get receipt. I need, I need to be sure. I believe God, but I want receipts because ain't nobody going to believe this, right? I need receipts. Let me call and talk to somebody. And it was like, dude, it's a credit. You don't want the credit? It's a credit. Listen, y'all. I know him to be a bill payer. I'm telling you, I've seen him do it in my life, in my business, more than one time. If you do his will, which is live by his word, right? He said, I had, I had to draw the line all the way back to the fact that I've been a consistent tithe payer. Come on. He said, I had to draw the line all the way back to say, God, I know I put you to the test. Come on, y'all. So his expectations was, I know this is possible. Why? Because I got a seed in the ground. Come on, y'all. You can't expect harvest if you don't have a seed in the ground. Y'all don't hear me tonight. Y'all don't hear me tonight. I hope this encourages you to start being a giver. You, you need breakthrough give. You need a door open. So come on, y'all. You need a job opportunity, so come on. Whatever it is, somebody say it's connected to your seed. Your breakthrough is connected to what you sowing, boo. Somebody might be saying, I don't have no money. Oh, but you got a skill. You got a talent. Come on. Are you sowing that? Come on, y'all. I got a seed in the ground. Come on, your breakthrough is connected to your seed. Ah, listen, y'all, that is such a blessing. Brother Will, we're excited and so happy for you. Uh, listen, somebody on YouTube said, I wouldn't even ask. I wouldn't have asked. <laughs> they said, I would not have even asked. <laughs> time, talent, and time. Yes, all of that is a part of your sowing. Now, if you, if you putting all of that together, honey, you, you got a harvest coming. You certainly have a harvest coming. I am so happy to hear this testimony. 
on tonight. Nobody else raised their hand, so we're going to move on. We've already prayed in for the ones that came a little late. We say, we say good evening to you, and thank God for all of you joining us, to all of our guests that's joining us here in Zoom and on YouTube. We say thank you so much for joining us here at Heart of Worship Church. Y'all, we're going to dig right into the Word of God <clears throat> on tonight. I told you guys on yesterday during prayer that you were in for a treat on today. And so we are so excited um, to have this person come and share the word of God with us for Better Boot Camp on tonight. If you're excited and you're ready uh, to hear the word on tonight, can you just put a fire in the chat? If you're here online with us, wherever you find yourself, come on, put a fire in the chat if you are ready for the word. Come on. I see you. Somebody's ready. Ready, ready, ready. Amen and amen. Well, um, we're going to have the word brought forth on tonight. I'm asking that you pray with him. Did I miss something? Oh, no, no, no. That was a mistake. I thought somebody private messaged me, but it was a mistake on their end. Listen, I've, uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready for the word um, on tonight. And that word is coming from everybody's friend, right? <laughs> everybody's favorite person. <laughs> everybody's uncle. Everybody's brother, right? But he's a son to Pastor DJ and I. And we're just <laughs> so excited and just blessed to have him in our lives and also being an arm, a neck. Uh, uh, another extension of who we are in our ministry to help hold our arms up here in the uh, ministry of Heart of Worship Church. And that is none other than our son, our brother, our friend, uh, bro MIT, y'all, minister in training, Michael Fletcher. Y'all give it up for him and let's receive him on tonight. Ooh, good evening, everybody. Listen, if y'all need a confidence boost, y'all better start serving because these introductions, they, they they get you good. They get you good. Uh, definitely excited to be here um, to share this word uh, that God has given me. And I'm going to give you tonight. Um, thank you to Pastor and Lady, not just for trusting me because I, I think that we've established that that already, but for really seeing me um, in a different way than maybe I've even seen myself over the years and allowing me to kind of walk in the things that you see. Um, so just jump right in. The title for tonight's message for Better Boot Camp is Don't Break from the Breaking. Don't Break from the Breaking. Um, yeah. So over the last, since I guess since we started Better Boot Camp, but since we started this year, I've really been trying to figure out, like, what does it mean to be better? So like, what does it mean to love God better? What does it mean to show up better? What does it mean to do better? Um, especially as it concerns like the life that I, the life that I live with God and the walk with Christ and just my whole faith journey. And I kind of landed on this scripture here. It's a familiar one. I'll read it to you. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Um, I beseech you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I know that we've heard that before. Um, definitely one that resonates with me for sure. Um, but I also, as I was preparing for this uh, evening, I looked it up in different versions of the Bible. And the Passion Translation is one that sort of stuck out to me a little bit differently than normal. So I read that as well. Uh, beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. So this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. And so you might be thinking, well, what is don't break from the break and have to do with with sort of living a Romans 12, 1 and 2 life? Well, that's what I'm about to tell you. So Sunday, we had an amazing encounter. You know, we after we leave church, you know, we kind of do our running around. I'm pulling up in my driveway probably about 9 30 at night. So it was a pretty full day. And I get a text from my Pam. And I'm like, at 9 30 at night, I'm like, oh, wait a minute now. And if you ever gotten a text from my Pam, 
you already know it's about to go down. You don't necessarily know what the conversation is going to be, but you know it's about to go down. So before I text back, I'm like, was I, was I rude to somebody today? Um, did I miss the chance to pray for somebody? I'm like, it can't be the first week of the month. I, I like, what's happening? Like, I, so my, my, my thoughts are racing. But I had to calm myself down, pull into the driveway, put the car in park, and I replied to the text. And seconds later, my phone rang. So I was like, I know my pain was like, I'm going to call him whether he responded or not. And I appreciate that, right? So the first thing my parents says is, I saw you today. And I'm like, well, of course you saw me today. Now she's like, no, 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 no. I saw you today and I witnessed you receiving a revelation from God. So then I'm like, okay, how does she know that though? I didn't talk about it. I didn't say, I didn't ask that I say something, that I do something. But the truth of the matter is my parent was right. Um, and initially I was going to deny it, but something different happened to me on Sunday. And I think that's sort of where where I want to land here. And this is sort of how we got here tonight. So while lady was ministering, and you know, when lady started ministering, you know, the, the words are going to come out, you're going to be touched. She, she has a way of connecting with a part of you, even if it's a room full of people, she has a way of connecting with a part of you that that is either hidden or tucked away or just sort of that is like resting, not to be dealt with. And she said, life almost knocked the wind out of her. And out of all the things that she said on Sunday, that is the phrase that that um, that caught me, like literally, like arrested me. And I immediately was reminded of a time, uh, probably when I was 14. I can tell you the exact date. I looked it up. Um, it was November 4th, 1995. And the only reason I know that is because I was watching Brandy on the Apollo when it used to come on. So I, I looked it up today just to see what the date was. So it was November 4th, 1995. And Brandy was on TV. And I heard her about to come back on stage to sing another song. And so just like any other irresponsible teenager, I'm running up and down the steps trying to get to the TV, but I have socks on. I don't have shoes on. And the steps in my house, there's a small set of steps, there's a landing, and there's a, then there's a longer set of steps. And I trying to hit the corner, thought I was about to like be a track star, run down those steps, and I slipped. I slipped and I fell, and I hit every single step on the way down and I slid down on my back, almost like you slide a basket of laundry or something like that. But two things happened. The physical pain of me beating my back on every step was almost unbearable. The second thing that happened was all the wind was knocked out of me. And so I'm in excruciating pain and I'm gasping for air at the same time. The reason why the phrase knock the wind out of me resonated so powerfully with me on Sunday because I sort of feel like that's what my life has been for the last five years. I feel like life literally tried to knock the wind out of me. And because I know what that feels like, I, I'm trying to paint a visual for you to see what it's like to literally be falling down the steps for five straight years, to be gasping for air for five straight years, to try to figure out what pain is worse, the one where you can't breathe or the one where your back is on fire. I can't tell you which one is, but that's what I felt like. Um, and then the other thing that happened on Sunday is both lady and pastor separately said, even though you may have endured hellish conditions, you are still winning. And that's 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 what caught me on Sunday. And just to give you an example, you know, I know I, I try to, you know, do my best to not carry my issues to church in, in a way that affects other people. You know, we're serving and I want to give people the best version of me. But behind the scenes, <laughs> All this stuff is going on in my life. My life is like, like in a hell state. And my mom randomly one day sends me this text. And I don't want to read the whole thing because it's a lot. But these are her exact words. What can I do to help you? I am truly and deeply concerned. You are my most beloved, but you might need some help. There's no judgment. I just want to help you. Whew. So what that told me was not only was my life sort of beaten the crap out of me and I was losing my wind I was in a space where I couldn't hide it anymore and I had to come out of hiding so thank you Jelani for that phrase because that's exactly what it was uh, so God made it clear to me that I definitely was broken but also that my focus was on the wrong thing I'm worried about how life is treating me but what I really should have been focused on focusing on was the ways that God was breaking me so that he could build me back up and so the last few years as difficult as they were were necessary for me to be more aligned with what God has for my life. And the only way I was truly going to live out this Romans 12, one and two life was to be broken by God for God. So I say all that to say, for me, 
the breaking process has sort of resulted in maybe like a four stage breaking, if you will. Um, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about this evening. And so the first part, the first part is the breakup, right? And in the breakup, in this part of the process, much of what I've known and what I've been comfortable with um, has literally been stripped away from me. Sometimes really subtly, like somebody slips away, somebody stops calling, you don't, you're not as close to someone. But sometimes things have been ripped away from me, like aggressively, um, to the point where I'm super clear that I can no longer be around these people, do this, like hang out with certain people, play familiar roles I've played in people's lives, um, whether it's at home, whether it's at church. Um, and for me, that's a lot. I'm a person, I, I like routine. So I like to do the same thing over, everybody knows me. I like to do the same thing. I don't like to switch things up. I find safety in routine. Um, I feel like, and for people who've known me for some years, you know, my life growing up, I've done well, but my life was was really, really unpredictable. And so the more I can establish a routine and the more I can predict what's going to happen, the better I feel because I can manage that much better. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes you just get a little tired of managing chaos, honestly. Um, but all of the routines and all of the things that made me feel safe and comfortable, they have been stripped away. Uh, and I'm like, well, Lord, what's this about? He was like, cool, go to Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Ah. He said, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining for what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. That's what that was about. So I didn't really have a choice. The thing, when something's taken from you and, and it's not within your reach, you can't go back to it. You can only go in the other direction. So I had to press forward. And it made me think of, and I know we talk about this uh, parable a lot, I mean, the story a lot, but the, the the woman at the well, you know, after her encounter with Jesus, she put that bucket down. Remember, she went to the well to get water. She didn't really expect to have this whole um, encounter and, you know, Jesus wasn't necessarily supposed to be at the well in her mind. Um, but when she had that encounter with Jesus, everything she knew, whatever she came to do, she put that bucket down and she went back to whatever her intentions were, whatever her plans were, they all changed in that moment. That was me. So old habits, familiar places, old friends, old relationships, or even old ways of ministry. Because, you know, a few years ago, you couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be in the choir forever, on the worship team forever. Um, and all of, that, all of that stuff changed. But what really had to change was my mindset, right? And what's tricky for me, like, it's one thing to let go of something that's causing you harm, like, or that that you can see the harm. It's another thing to be forced to let go and move on from something that, seem to serve me well, like routine, like systems, like structure, because in reality, it was holding me back from fully submitting to God's wills for my life, God's will for my life. And that, letting go of something that's crazy is one thing. Letting go of something that you can't tell is really harming you until you're on the other side of it, different feeling. So that's the breakup. Part two is the breakdown. So we broke up, now we're breaking down. You saw the, I told you to text my mom, right? I had to literally fall apart. And I, I clearly I was falling apart because as best as I thought I was managing and keeping stuff together. And I mind you, now I'm, I'm working a job. I'm running a company. I'm at church. I'm taking care of my siblings. I'm doing X, Y, Z. My mom's like, yeah, you can fool everybody else. But I see what happens when, when, when you home in the house, you know, by yourself. And you're sitting in the dark and, you know, you don't want to turn the TV on. You don't want to answer the phone. You don't want to respond to text messages. I see what you're going through. You're falling apart. I was in emotional pieces. That was necessary for God to put those pieces back together again. And the breakdown for me, I thought it was so subtle that if you didn't know, it was easy to miss, right? So it could have been like, like I said, just sitting in the house quiet. Uh, you know, people know me. I don't like a lot of noise. I don't like a lot of frustration. I like the, I like peace. But when my mom saw it, she's like, yeah, no, you're, you're, you're sinking over here. And the way that your soul is showing up is not who I created. I know my child. You, like she said, you are my beloved. Nobody knows me like that woman. And so for her to say that, whatever I thought I was masking, yeah, that was a lie. Let me be clear about that. Um, the other part about the breakdown is you also, so break break down emotionally, but you also get to break down what's actually happening. When you're in a state like that, you start to overthink, you start to overanalyze. And I'm already an overthinker anyway. People know that, right? And so I'm like, well, what's, so now I'm thinking to myself, well, what's going on? Why am I like this? What, a, what about what I've endured has forced me to remain in this place and live this way. Because this isn't really how I want to show up, but I feel stuck here. 
Um, but I was reminded that God uses our spiritual brokenness to redirect us back towards him, right? And if I was feeling good, I might not have turned to him the way I did. Um, and if you've ever been down and out uh, and you know the kind of place that you have to be in, when you decide that the only thing left for you to do is turn to God. Um, and if you think about some of the scriptures that we've read, you can go to, you know, 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. This is how it puts it. So for godly grief, right, there's a difference, right? For godly grief and the pain God is permitted to direct, that produces a repentance, turn it back to him, but turn it away from, you know, what you got going on, that leads and contributes to salvation and deliverance from evil, and it never brings regret. The difference is the worldly grief um, that's hopeless and sorrow that's characteristic of this of this world is deadly, and it 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 it, it doesn't have the same usefulness as godly grief. So I thank God that even in that space, I was dealing with godly grief because it was God that was taking things away and God that was a part of that process. Um, so that's part two. Right? So we had the breakup, we had the breakdown. Now we got the break in. And when you think about the break in, you can think about this a couple of different ways. Um, but this, this isn't necessarily about me being robbed in the way that you might think. Um, it's more like, um, you know, when you, when you get, I guess people know, when you get a new pair of shoes and maybe you got a pair of shoes for a special occasion, uh, you know, you want to look good for like the women's brunch, or maybe you got some sneakers for YSLP this weekend. I'm just plugging two events, right? Um, sometimes the new shoes don't fit like, like the shoes that you're used to wearing. And so you have to break them in, right? So there's something new, um, but they're uncomfortable. Not because they're not the right size. It's because you're not used to wearing them. You're not used to walking in them. Your feet have to conform to them. Um, and they have to conform to your feet. You have to kind of meet so that they become more comfortable. That's what I mean about the break in. But the truth of the matter is, the longer you wear them, not only do they become more comfortable, if you do it the right way, they oftentimes become your preferred shoe. So you went from this, this newness that was uncomfortable to now is your preference. And I feel like in a lot of ways, though I've been serving and though I believe that me and God are locked up and I'll never, I'll never say anything different, even in this these last years, that has been the same for me as I continue to walk with Christ. Um, it required a deeper submission and a renewing of my mind. And that's tough. Um, and truthfully, it's tough for believers and, and seasoned saints. So some people are like, oh, you know, you're new to Christianity. No, I'm not new to Christianity. I've been, I've been baptized three times. I was born premature. My mother wasn't plain about me and God. She was like, well, I don't know what's going on with this baby, but he was born in 24 weeks. I'm giving him back to God from day one, right? So even for me, even if I've been around, you know, everything looked and felt different. And when you have a renewing of your mind, the way that you navigate and understand the world changes and your calling and your purpose become a priority, which means other things get deprioritized, right? And so you start asking questions like, well, and then I ask myself, like, what does it look like to serve church versus to serve God in church? And which one am I really doing? Am I doing a thing because I'm good at it or am I doing a thing because God is in it? And I need to be really mindful about that. Um, and really... Sometimes it's just uncomfortable, right? Like I came from, um, I came from a really traditional Baptist church, and I'm talking about. I mean, we, we joke about the old school churches, but we know what that is, right? We're talking about lap cloths, we're talking about ushers and the white gloves, we're talking about the stockings that make noise when you walk, we're talking about white shirts and black pants on first uh, Sunday, you know, the whole thing. And so, even for me coming to Howard Church, first, if anybody remembers my first couple of weeks there, I was like, oh. We could wear jeans and sneakers here. I don't believe it. I think it's a fluke. Nah, I don't. I don't believe that. And I was still getting dressed. You know, right? A whole. So then somebody came over and was like, "Uh, Fletch, you know, you're doing too much. We don't really dress like that here." Even what seemed like it would be more comfortable was still uncomfortable to me in that moment. Um, even the fact that you know, pastor and lady, you know, I've been to churches where your service is is more connected to how you can build a church. Pastor and lady, when they run up on you and they do run up on you, they're like, yo, how can you get closer to God for your own salvation? You're like, oh, you concerned about me and my relationship with God and not how it impacts our church? And of course it will. Of course it will. But just having a pastor and a first lady or two pastors that think about your growth differently than previous, it just it just all it kind of throws you off. It, 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 it tricks you a little bit. You're like, what's going on? What's happening? Um, but then 2 second, second Corinthians 5, 17 say, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. So I'm like, okay, this feels crazy to me. But if this is what the if this is what the word says, I guess this is what the word says. But I, I kept asking myself two questions. One, how do I manage the discomfort of the unfamiliar? 
And, you know, being a Christian is a lot of things, but it can also be uncomfortable. And following Christ can be uncomfortable. Um, and then the second thing is, do I even know how to be this new creature? Sure. Now we had to break up, we had to break down, we had to break in. I'm a new creature, but I don't, I don't know how to navigate this. This is this is not what I, you know, this is not what I was doing before. Um alas, so we got the breakout. I mean, the breakup, the breakdown, the break in, and then we got the breakout. And we all know what breakout means, right? Breakout means freedom, because there's freedom in this life. So once you kind of get through all those stages, once I got through those stages, there's a freedom in the life of Christ. One, you're free from your old ways, you're free from old laws and and all the things that have been shared throughout the breaking process. And then I, I named a few, I didn't name them all because, you know, my business is my business, but you know, there's lots of things that I had to stop and get rid of and change about myself and my life, the way I eat, the way I move, the way I live. While I was going to church all last year, you know, I don't want to block somebody's blessing because they like, he can't teach me how to be in God. He can't take care of his temple. Boom. Things like that. Right. Um, and even, even in first Peter two sixteen, it talks about living as a free people, um, but not using your freedom as a cover for evil. You want to live as God's slaves. You want to be so, in lockstep with God, there's, but there's freedom in God and serving God, okay? The second thing about the breakout is like, it means when you're showing up with something new, right? <laughs> you know, maybe you might break out a new suit for Easter Sunday, or you might, you know, break out, you know, some new, a new ministry that you're, that you're, that you're birthing, or you might break out and become an author because God told you to write a book. I don't know, there's lots of things happening. Um, so breaking out, there's a freedom, but it's also showing up with something new. Um, and just, just so you know, that's in the word. First Peter 2 and 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you, more pro you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You breaking out. You breaking out of darkness, right? That's what I was doing. Remember, I told you I was sitting in the dark, literally, not figuratively. I was literally sitting in the dark in my own home. But now, now I'm breaking out of that darkness into the marvelous light. Um, and that light can now shine and, and, and now it can be exposed the way it's supposed to be exposed, the way that God has called it to be. Um, so that, that is my breaking process, right? And having endured the breaking process, right? The breakup, the breakdown, the break in, the breakout, I actually have learned a few lessons along the way. And it wasn't, it wasn't just the fact that I can endure a thing that God would call me to endure. The first thing. I keep saying I was broken, but as I was working on this message tonight, what I but what I now know, right, is that I was divinely dismantled. That was God picking me apart for a purpose, right? And because on this side of the process, um, I, I know that God was in it. When I think back over it, I see it differently. Um, and if we're talking about being transformed, that's a part of the transformation process. God was like, look, I don't put all these beautiful things together, but you don't added a whole bunch of stuff to it. Let me go back in this back. Like, let me take this out. Let me take this out. Let me tear this off. You You don't need this. Actually, you need more of this. You need more of this. So being divinely dismantled is a blessing. It may not feel like it in the time, but it is. Number two, um, like I mentioned, you'll see the process differently when you know God is in it. When you can trust the person that is that is managing the thing that you're enduring, you know, like, it's like, it's for my good, right? Like, it's the same thing as when you, like, I ran track in high school. I, you know, track practice was crazy, but I trusted my coach so much. I'm like, even if I'm heaving, even if I um, have asthma and I'm acting like I don't have it, or, you know, my leg is sore, I know that he has my best interest at heart and whatever he has me to endure, I will be better on, I will run this race differently if I do what he says to do. Um, and there's a season for everything. You know, we, we talk about, um, there's a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, right? This isn't the Bible. <laughs> this is, this is, this. I didn't make this up. I'm like, Lord, this, 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 are you sure? He was like, you don't see it in my word? I'm like, well, I guess you can't be more sure than that, huh? So number one, I wasn't broken. I was divinely dismantled. Number two, you will be broken in safe spaces. You will be broken in safe spaces. So sometimes when, when things are happening, when it was happening to me, I always felt like, like, what was going on? Who was out to get me? You know, they say the weapons will form, but they won't prosper. But my God, they get really close. They feel really close to me. If when, I, when my boss was yelling and screaming in my face and, 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 and cursing at me with the door open, or when my other boss was was spreading lies about me at work and, and taking my work for her own and, and seeding discord and trying to get me to go back to a department that I created, but take the job that I, I, I 
I was director of a department. She wanted me to be a, a, a recruiter. I'm like, for the department I started and built, man, that sounds crazy, right? In during all of that, that felt dangerous to me. But in the truth of the matter is it was in a safe space. Why do I know that? Because if everything that I just talked about, if God was in the midst the whole time, and part of it was for, for or all of it, right? So that he could achieve his purpose and his will for my life. And I'm certain that every detail of what happened was also under the watchful eye of God, right? I mean, it had to be managed by God. And there's no coincidence, right? We just talked about yesterday, um, abiding in the shadow, right? Abiding in his tabernacle, he'll hide you. So even in the season of breaking, even in the season of divine dismantling, they got to trust. I had to trust. And I'm encouraging you to trust as well that God is going to keep you through the process. And that's why you know you're safe. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be better than when you started. And he's not going to let anything happen to you that doesn't serve his purpose and his will. Third, um, and yeah, this was a big one. Uh, my hesitation to fully submit to God was caused by my hesitation to be broken by God. Um, it is really hard for God to use what you withhold from him. <laughs> When we talk about uh, uh, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, I, like I, I, I've heard it obviously so many years in my newer understanding of it, um, and it is that you have to give everything that you are to God, all of your broken pieces, all of your flaws, all of your imperfections, all of your brokenness. Then He can do what He needs to do with it. But if you if you're so busy trying to hold it together that you can't give it to God, God like cool, I wait. Y'all know everybody had that teacher. She, they, the teacher's trying to do something, he, and you not focused. God's like, hmm, I wait, I, I, I wait. It's gonna be harder for you than it is for him anyway. I wait. Mm -hmm. And trust me, it catches up with you. Uh, so yeah, yeah. My hesitation to fully submit to God was causing my hesitation to be broken by God. That's for sure. So honestly, like as I process all of this, I, I think about what my Pam said to me on Sunday, um, and what she said was, "I saw you." In the rest of the phrase, and I hope she doesn't mind me sharing it, she said, I saw you like a spotlight was on you. Um, and what I took that to mean after study is that my brokenness produced a light from God that shone differently now, that shines differently now than it did before. And so I know it's like, I was trying to think of an example of like, what what could I use to kind of to display sort of what I, what I went through? And I'm like, okay, maybe I was God's glow stick. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a glow stick, but they're really not hard to activate. If you have one of these things, you take it and you break it along the entire length of the glow stick to break the inner tube. So the whole thing has to be broken for you to break the middle. The whole thing has to be broken for you to break the middle. But it's only when you break it, it's only when you break it like that, does it actually glow and shine the way that it's supposed to. It doesn't really work until you break it. It doesn't glow. It doesn't glow until you break it. But you have to break the entire thing to get to the inner tube, so that it can shine the way it needs to shine. So I kind of, in this moment, feel like God's glow stick. Um, I know that the breaking process was was a wild experience. I can't anticipate that it won't happen again. I pray to God I'm more aligned with His will. I can see it coming, and I can I can know how to manage it better. Um, but I'm thankful that God took the time to break me and to, to build me back up or to divinely dismantle me for his purpose, right? And hopefully that's a reminder to you about how good God is. Because even though the times are rough, I'm thankful that when you finish, you get to shine like this glow stick. So I thank you, God, for the breaking process, Lord. Even though in the midst of it, we're too close to see the benefit of the Lord. I thank you that you all knowing, all powerful, understand exactly what we need to get what you need out of us, Lord. I thank you, God, that even in the painful times, even in the struggles, even in the dark nights, Lord, in the cold mornings, that you will by my side, that you will by our side, that you protect us, that you keep us, Lord, that you surround us, that you have us cradled in your arms. Lord. I thank you, God, for what it looks like on this side of the breaking versus what it looked like before, Lord. I can look back and say, oh, what a, what a mighty God I serve, and look how far I've come. Lord. I thank you, God, that this is only one step in a process to bring us closer to you, to, to continue to build us, Lord, to continue to fill us up and continue to do your work. I thank you, God, just for allowing us to, to be broken together, Lord, to allow us to be broken in the midst of the brothers and sisters uh, that you have given us to continue to pray for us and watch over us. Lord, I thank you, God, for the people that see us even when we want to hide and even when we don't want to be seen, Lord. And I thank you, God, for putting watchmen around us, Lord, so we can continue to be protected as we go through this process. Lord, we don't take 
your will for granted, Lord. We only want to be closer to you. We only want to submit to you, Lord. We only want to give our life to you, Lord. And we thank you right now for you creating a process for us to do that in your hands and by your way, Lord. We ask that you continue to bless us, bless this world, bless the people that are under the sound of my voice, Lord. bless the pastors and leaders of this house, Lord. Continue to help us go from the people who are breaking to the people who are building, Lord, so we can continue to do the things you have called us to do and do them well, Lord. So when we come across the next person that might be breaking, it might be chipping, it might be fraying at the edges, Lord, we can hear from you and know what to do, Lord. We don't take your time. We don't take your presence. We don't take your effort for granted, Lord. We don't take your light for granted. We want to continue to shine and we ask that you continue to light that fire in us, Lord, so we can continue to be a beacon of light and hope for you, Lord. We thank you, God. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, y'all. Listen, 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 listen. Me too, Kayla. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> listen. Listen, Fletcher. Listen. Listen. <laughs> listen. Oh, nobody's surprised. I'm not surprised. But li let me tell you, when you yield to the Father, hmm, when you come out of yourself, huh? when you come out of yourself and do what the man of God just said on tonight, this is the result. Let me tell you, this is the result that you get when you yield to the Father. You don't have to make testimonies. The Lord said, I will prepare a table before you. Come on, y'all. This is what that looks like. When you are, when you allow God to break you, that is Fletch. Listen, you pulled out the glow stick. I you think we ain't see that. You pulled out props and everything. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. He pulled the props out on you, on us, y'all. He said, you got to break that thing in the middle. You got to allow God to break you at the core of who you want to be. Come on. You got to allow him to dis disrupt everything that you wanted so that he can let you glow and be the lighthouse that he created you to be. Listen. Listen, Linda, listen. That's a whole word. That's a whole word. Divinely dismantled. I was like, that's the title right there, sir. Divinely dismantled. You had about four, five, five messages, actually, y'all. Divinely dismantled. Fletch, we thank you. Is your mama on here? Is she on here? Oh, you're going to get a beating. I am. I am. <laughs> I am, but you know she don't like me telling her business, so I said, "Let me know." But then it's on YouTube; she can go watch it. Listen, listen. You know what? What really got me when you said your mother looked at you and said, "I see you." I know you can fool everybody else. I see you. She asked you, "What is going on?" She said, "I see you." She said, "You are my only beloved." <laughs> Can I tell y'all, that's the, that's what God is saying to you tonight, to all of you on this call tonight. He said, you are my only beloved. Let me tell you, it's a whole different level when somebody call you beloved, okay? It's another level when somebody says to you, you are my only beloved, all right? Listen, your mother said, you are my only beloved, and you were able to see God, through what your mother was saying to you. It wasn't your mother just speaking. It was God speaking through your mom. You know why? Because he knows that your mom has your heart. And he had to speak through somebody that you would definitely believe. Okay, this is God. Come on, y'all. Sometimes he will go through to the extreme to make sure he get his son and his daughter's attention. He said, I will use whatever vessel I got to use. Come on, to get to you. But some of us, because it ain't the vessel in which we wanted to come from, we don't hear it. Well, we don't want to hear it. We shut it down. 
We don't have a lot of followers. We don't have a, a large platform. We ain't one of your cheerleaders. <laughs> we ain't one that you got yoked on a string to do whatever you, come on y'all, that part. God, when he wants to use you, he will go through any extreme. Why? Because he trusts you. You were going through a process of a break-in so that he can allow you to glow for such a time as this tonight. Somebody say, God, we thank you for your word and your son that brought forth your word on tonight. If you were blessed, let me see some fire in the chat. Let me, not the fire. Y'all put some of your takeaways. I want to see what are some of your takeaways on tonight. YouTube, if you're here on, the, on this with us, let us know what are some of your takeaways on tonight. Ian said, it doesn't, the, the glow stick don't work until you break it. <laughs> if you want to be used by God, you got to be willing to be broken. Come on, y'all. Come on. Somebody say you are not broken, but divinely dismantled. Listen, she's, Sister Cleo said, I'm doing the thing because I'm good at it, or I'm, am I doing it because God is in it? Come on. You will be broken in a safe, in safe spaces. Yes. The process is different when God is in it. Then God uses you when God uses you, it's because he trusts you. Absolutely, Tiffany. Dr. Collette says all of it. Sister Eliza says being divinely dismantled, more importantly, you will be broken in safe spaces. Come on. Everybody's got that divinely dismantled. Listen, he cannot use what you withhold from him. That was also good. There is freedom in serving God. Do you know? Listen, there is freedom in serving God. There is freedom in serving God. That divinely dismantled, the breakdowns, all of it was so good. Y'all, it really was. Yes, he is, Tyara. God is going to keep you through the process. Just hold on. Somebody said, hold on. He's going to keep you through the process. This was so good. We thank God for Brother Flesh. Y'all cover him in your prayers. Let's do that now. Stretch your hands towards your screen. Father, we cover him with your blood tonight. We cancel every assignment of the enemy, God. We thank you, oh God, that there won't be any backlash, oh God, because of the word that he's spoken on tonight. We thank you, oh God, that he will be covered by your blood, Lord Jesus, that he will continue to walk, oh God, in the mantle that you have on him, Lord, that he will continue to be a light in dark places. Oh God, we thank you that he does work in, in one of the seven mountains, oh God, that you said that we would have influence in. Father, we thank you, oh God, that he will continue continue to have influence in one of the mountains that he serves in, oh God. We thank you that he will continue to glow, to be the lighthouse, oh God, for such a time as this. We thank you. We give you glory, honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Godly grief versus worldly grief. That's good, my Pam. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Listen, it's time to give. Let's give on tonight. If you've been blessed, matter of fact, y'all already said you were blessed. Come on, let's sow tonight into this word. We want you to give, a, however great, whatever level of greatness you've been blessed on tonight, I want you to match that. Only you and God know that, all right? I want you to do your best and sow a seed on tonight. You can give by clicking the link that is in the chat. Um, it will take you straight to the website to give, or you can text how, the word how, and the amount that you would like to give to 28950, all right? If you have the app, Go ahead and press give in the app and it will take you through the proper steps to give there. All right. This has been good. We want to thank all of you again for joining us here um, for Bible study. Listen, um, on Saturday, what's Saturday? On Saturday. <laughs> is the YSLP. Listen, they're having their outing. And so we want you guys to go online and sign up. I don't know when that door is closing. Um, I'm sure they have to get some registration, a red final count for whoever is joining us. Joining them, um, I won't be there, but joining them. So y'all ain't got to be scared to come. I'm not coming. All right. 
I'm not. <laughs> I'm not coming. Oh God. But we'll be praying with you guys. The registration link is there in the chat, so you should be able to click it there. If you miss it, you can go on www.howchurchonline.org and click the events tab, and you will find all of the information uh, that you need there. This is for all young adults. Listen, I think it goes all the way up to age 40, married or single. So go ahead and join them on Saturday for their outing. I believe they're going to Dave and Buster's in Woodbridge. Yes, in Woodbridge. Go and have a good time. You, you never know who you're going to meet there, y'all. Go and build community. Go and build community and be a light, all right? Don't blend in, all right? Be the light in this place, all right? So listen, we want you to go enjoy them. And then on Sunday, we're having a taking it back to old school way. We should have said old time way, taking it back to the old time way, huh? We're going to have church on Sunday. We're going to have devotional service on Sunday. Y'all ready for that? It's going to be a good time. Somebody say, can I wear my hat? Wear your hat. You can wear your hat, wear your stockings and your dress, wear your dollies, your gloves, whatever it is that you did back in the day. I'm from the country. We wore it all right? We had, uh, <laughs> put your slips on now. Don't y'all forget your slips. All right. <laughs> Don't forget your slips. Listen, you want to bring your tambourine, your cowbells, your triangle, whatever, your washboards, bring it, bring it all. And we're going to have, <laughs> y'all didn't have washboards. We had washboards, honey. I wish I had my granddaddy's. I want to do somebody have, I need to ask. I still, I wish I would have had my, my, not my granddaddy, my grandmother's washboard. A lady said to slip. Yes, you got to wear the slip. Listen, y'all come. It's going to be a good time in the Lord. It's Palm Sunday. We're leading up to Resurrection Week, y'all. And so uh, we want to make sure we're going to start it off real good, right? Going back to centering ourselves to how we were raised and brought up in the ministry. We didn't lose that, right? Holiness is still right. We still got holiness. Times have changed, yes, but our God has, has not changed. He's still God. The same God of yesterday, he's still that God today. So we want you guys to come and join us on this coming Sunday. Those of you that are joining us on YouTube, this coming Sunday at 10.30 a.m., all right? 10.30 a.m., Come, you don't have to dress up if you don't want to. Some of us will be dressed, all right? But you don't have to dress up. It is not that kind of church. We're not that kind of church where you can't come in any kind. You can come in, not just any kind of way, but you know, be, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, all right. So y'all go, whatever you do, stay with God, all right? Mom, Pam, can you close us out in prayer really, 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 really quick? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry that wasn't really, really quick, but Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. Lord, we thank you for light today, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the man of God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today that you are just filling us up, giving us so much to look forward to, oh God. I thank you for building up our expectation, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, I ask, oh God, that as we continue through this week, that we will continue to move forward in the expectation that you have already set down on the inside, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for blessings overflowing, overtaking us in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you for positive attitudes, believing that all things are working together for our good. Hallelujah. If we broke down, broke broke out, whatever breaking is taking place, glory to God. We know that you have us in your hands, oh God, and all things are possible. We give you praise for it. We give you honor and glory. And thank you, God, for keeping our pastors safe, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, those that are traveling, God, give them traveling mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we just want to go deeper. We're excited about Sunday, but that is a opportunity to go deeper in what you have called us to in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much, Mom Pam. Listen, thank you guys so much for joining us again. I know you've been blessed. Y'all continue to chew on that word. Let it carry you through the week and watch God continue to speak to you through his preached word. We thank God for you. Y'all stay with God and we'll see you guys.